Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call this uh, meeting of the Business and Utilities Subcommittee to order. Uh, today is Wednesday, March 17th, 2021. It is 3.30 p.m. Madam Clerk, will you take the roll, please? Representatives Alexander, Calfee, Here. Hazelwood, Here. Hodges, Here. Holesclaw, Here. Johnson, Here. Manis, Here. Thompson, Here. Vaughn, Zachary, Here. Chairman Boyd. Here. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let's call this meeting of the Business and Utilities Subcommittee meeting to order a few administrative items item four has been taken off of notice item eight has been taken off of notice item one has been rolled one week item 11 has been rolled one week and item five has been rolled to the heel of the calendar so let's go ahead and get started uh, first up today is item number two house bill 855 by chairman powers chairman powers you are recognized we have a motion we have a second Chairman Powers, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Committee, uh, House Bill 855 is the Tennessee Business Fairness Act brought to me by the NFIB. We've learned a lot over the past year regarding public health guard guidelines, essential versus non-essential, and a lot more. We've also learned that a small business and certain industries were impacted a lot more than others. And, and we just feel like government shouldn't be in the business of picking winners and losers. We've seen big box retailers stay open while small retailers operated at 50% capacity or closed altogether. Like uh, if y'all are familiar, I'm not familiar with Phillips Toy Mart, but it's here in the Nashville area. They end up closing two months while you could go buy a toy at Walmart or Target right down the street. So it's really had an impact on the smaller business. Uh, this legislation seeks to provide the Tennessee business with the assurance that they Number one, cannot be forced to close while larger competitors stay open. And number two, they can follow any set of guidelines, state or local, and operate at the capacity that works best for them while protecting their customers and employees. With that, Mr. Chairman, I'll be glad to take any questions from the committee. Thank you for that explanation, Chairman Powers. Do we have any questions from the committee? Representative Manish, you recognize. Thank you, Representative Powers. This is a great legislation you brought as a Thank you. as a business owner who actually was impacted during that time. Mm -hmm. uh, I lost 100% of my business during that time, and you could go to Lowe's or Home Depot and see these big box stores. And I often stood there and wondered, is this really fair? Mm -hmm. And it's not fair. And I so, uh, my uh, again, I'll echo my sentiments. Thank you for bringing this legislation right. to us. It's a, it's a great right. piece. All right. Chairman Powers, recognize. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And, and we've seen that happen a lot. Uh, a pharmacy, you know, you might have a large pharmacy that's open and a smaller one that have to close down or go to 50% capacity. Uh, I know my my business was impacted. We have to lock the door and close it, everything down and work inside a little bit or work at home. So we want to make sure it's just a fair and level playing field for everybody. Representative Hodges, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It just so if if they closed one of the big, if they close everything, does, does the governor still have the ability to close everything by executive order? Then, Chairman Powers, you recognize? Uh, I'm, you know, I, uh, the executive orders. I don't know if the ones that we had in the past were more of a recommendation than than a mandate to close. So that would be up to. Uh, legal probably to figure that out if if the attorney general ever if, or the attorney general would have to get involved if you were actually going to close one what they've done was recommended i think and made the recommendation that a lot of stores close or follow guidelines that were inappropriate that that made them close or they couldn't uh couldn't open because of that but i don't, I don't think we ever had the mandate where they actually forced anybody to close hodges you recognize Thank you. So I guess my only concern, I mean, I think it's a, a good bill, and I, I get the problem, right? Because, you know, I've I seen a local nurseries closed while low selling plants. That's a problem. But uh, I guess the, the, the only concern I have is that w we don't have the ability to close if, if something major were to happen. I mean, if Ebola uh, comes to Tennessee and, and we're seeing a 90% mortality rate, are, are we going to be able to shut stores down if, if we need to? Uh, you know, and that's the, the, the only question that I have, the only concern I have. Okay. Chairman Powers. Yeah, and, and that's a great question, too, and, and I, I don't really know the answer to that to either because the state of emergency, I don't know if that was within the purview of the governor to, to be able to actually force a business to close. I know we had a lot that did, and a lot of people were just going by the recommendation and the, and the Tennessee guidelines that they, or CDC guidelines, but 
I don't think that they actually could force them to close or penalize them if they didn't. Representative Hodges, could, could legal answer that question, if at all possible? Absolutely. Let's go out of session, and we will hear from uh, Jamie Shanks from Legal Services. Jamie Shanks, Office of Legal Services. Um, my understanding, and forgive me, I don't have it in front of me to look directly at the language. Um, the governor had issued executive orders that um, during this pandemic that had suspended different parts of the statutes. Um, and I know that there is some um, debate now whether or not that was within the governor's authority, but that ultimately would be, have to be determined by a court. I can't you know, say one way or other how they would go in it, but he was acting under statute um, and promulgated the um, executive orders pursuant to that. This language here would um, instead say that there's an option on uh, what your, what uh, precautions and guidelines you're following. So that's the difference with this. Thank you, Jamie. Let's go back into session. Representative Hodges, do you have any follow-up? Okay. Chairman Powers, do you have anything? Uh, no. I'll, I'll be glad to take any other questions. If you... Members of the committee, do we have any more questions for Chairman Powers? If not, uh, we are voting on House Bill 855 to send it to full commerce. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it, and the bill is on its way to full commerce. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman committee. Next up is item number three. That's House Bill 408 by Chairman Keesling. Do we have a motion? We have a motion. We have a second. We are on the bill properly. Chairman Keesley, you recognize. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee. This, uh, this is local application. It changes uh, Scott Morgan County. It changes the enforcement representation for the Board of Trustees, which is a made up citizens gas utility district, to establish an at-large position beginning with the August 2025 uh, 2025 election and wh where we are right now the uh, the board began when it in its charter in 93 uh, it's based on population we, so we had three three members uh, five member board three from Scott two from Morgan simply because of the population difference so uh, Morgan has has grown of course in population so what the board decided to do is is just change that fifth, uh, fifth position to an at-large, Keep still keeping that five-member board. So with that, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'll Thank you for that explanation. Questions. Chairman Keesland, members, do we have any questions for the chairman? If not, we are voting on House Bill 408 to move it to full commerce. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Aye. Ayes have it. And Chairman, your bill is off to full commerce. Thank you. Next up is item number six. That's House Bill 28 by Representative Cooper. We have a motion. We have a second. Uh, Representative Cooper, you are recognized. This is House Bill 28. And Representative Cooper, just to clarify, you are recognized whenever, whenever you're ready. All right. Thank okay. you so much. And thank you for your patience. I want to make sure, I mean, I have two bills running around. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to write. 165. 
And Representative Cooper, this is House Bill 28 is the one we're talking about. Bill 28. Uh, All right, thank you for your patience. House Bill 28 authorizes municipal electrics, rural electric cooperatives, and telephone cooperatives to provide broadband internet service within distressed counties that are outside the entity's, the entity's current service area. It requires the Department of Environment and Conservation to make broadband internet service available to all state parks located in distressed counties. Um, and I brought this bill because you know that we're in COVID now and many of the youngsters have been out of school for so long, but some were able to have uh, uh, lessons on the internet, virtual lessons on the internet, but many of them in distressed areas have not been able to to be in school. And I have a real, real concern about that, and I think most of us who know about it uh, have concerns about it. And I went through the code, and the code says that, that was reported to me by FISCA, that there are 11 counties 11 counties have been de designated as distressed by the Department of Economic and Community Development for fiscal year 2021. That's Bledsoe, Clay, Cox, Grundy, Hancock, Hardeman, Lake, Lauderdale, Perry, Scott, and Wayne. The proposed language defined defines broadband as wireless internet transmission speeds of at least 25 megabytes per second for download and 25 megabytes for upload, or the current definition provided by the Federal Communications Commission, whichever figure is, is fastest. There are five state parks located within the distressed counties based on information provided by TDEC. Cost of installing broadband at each park vary, vary based on size and geography of the park. And one of the five parks, Fall Creek Falls, currently meets the requirements of the legislation. Uh, based on recent upgrades in similar parks and facilities, TDEC estimates the installation of fiber optic cable within the park will cost $30,000 per mile with the following, uh, well, they have some information on here about each park, so I won't go through all of those. But there is a need for us to have uh, the internet for our children. Too many of them are out of school because of COVID now. And then even in school, a lot of children are in virtual school, and, 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 and we're not keeping up to date with our other children in the county. Now, I brought this from from Shelby because I represent Shelby County in the south, uh, southwest area of uh, Shelby County. And I had letters from parents who have written me about their not having access to, not only access to cable, but they don't have access really to their cell phones for going out. And I don't know, I wanted to just read a few things that I had from a letter from a parent just this week. We, the members of the Boxtown community, are greatly concerned with cell phone power reception. So you see, if they have problems with cell phones, they don't, they can't find a hot spot anywhere. And I was thinking that hopefully that we, and I know this is a big note that, that we're saying, I don't know how much study we've done with that and how, uh, what we could start doing to make sure that we <coughs> have allow access for all the children who are, uh, K through 12 children, our children, and just families. Because you're out of date if you don't have the internet. I'm still trying to learn a lot of things, but I know without my cell phone and with not an internet, there are a lot of information that I would really be hard, would be, wouldn't be able to get it. Uh, and that and communication is one of our biggest problems on anything that we're doing. We're, a lot of times people say, I have not uh, seen that 
I don't, I have not, you know, heard about it unless it was a television or or something. But if they don't have that internet and telephone, I don't know how they're making it. So with that, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair and members, I would uh, entertain any questions that you may have. Thank you, uh, Representative Cooper, for that explanation, and I will uh, appreciate your passion for this topic. And I, and this committee absolutely shares that desire to get broadband out there. Um, we we are. It has been the practice of this committee to kind of wait and see with the governor putting so much money into broadband this year to see if some of the things that you're wanting to do might actually be covered with what he's doing. And we don't have a Senate sponsor on your bill yet. So it, is there a motion from the committee that we roll this to the first calendar of 2021? I'm sorry, of 22. I apologize. Do we have a second? Okay, we have a motion, we have a second without objection, first calendar of 2022. Thank you, Representative Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Next up is item number five by Representative Hurt, House Bill 716. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Do we have a motion and a second on Representative Hertz's bill? On House Bill 716, can we get a motion and a second? Second. We have a, <laughs> we have a motion, we have a second. Representative Hurt, you have dodged a bullet there and you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate you working with me today and I, I appreciate the indulgence there to get me moving. <laughs> um, House Bill 716, clarifies that the Uniform Residential Landlord-Tenant Act is the sole governing authority on landlord-tenant relationships in counties where it applies. Members, you have heard the explanation. Do we have any questions for the sponsor? Seeing none, we are voting on House Bill 716 to send it to full commerce. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. House Bill 716 is on its way to full commerce. Thank you, Mr. Chairman Committee. Next up is item number nine. That's House Bill 390 by Representative Harris. We have a motion. We have a second. And uh, Representative Harris, you are recognized on, on your bill. Thank you, and, Chair, thank you mm -hmm. Chairman and Committee. I, I'm going to end up rolling this one one week um, as well as next month. Okay. Without objection, rolled one week. Thank you, Representative Harris. Members, we're going to take a brief recess while we wait on the uh, uh, Chairman Vaughn to get here. So uh, just stand by. We'll be back in session momentarily.
Members, we are back in session. Uh, just a uh, update, uh, item number 10, House Bill 1328 has been rolled one week. Chairman Vaughn, uh, you're up next. That's item number seven, House Bill 649. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Chairman Vaughn, you are recognized on your bill. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Th what this bill contemplates doing is- It looks like we have an amendment, Chairman Vaughn. What drafting code are you showing on that? That would be 5256. That's what I'm showing. Do we have a motion and a second on the amendment? We have a motion, we have a second on the amendment. Uh, Chairman Vaughn, go ahead with your amendment. This makes this uh, amendment makes the bill, uh, Mr. Chairman. It contemplates a financially distressed utility district, how it is disposed of uh, within the system. It uh, allows for the Utility Management Review Board to consider a number of different options for it. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you for that explanation, Chairman Vaughn. Members, do we have any questions on the amendment? Questions being called on the amendment. Without objection, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The amendment is on the bill. Chairman Vaughn, you're recognized on the bill as amended. And given that the amendment makes the bill, sir, uh, I just, uh, I'll stand for any questions on the bill. Questions been called. Uh, without objection, we're voting on House Bill 649 as amended to send it to full commerce. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Bill passes on its way to full commerce. Members, uh, that concludes our business for the day. Uh, without objection, this meeting is adjourned.